What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be building out this incredible side menu with Swift UI. So we can see a screenshot of the designs here. We are gonna be building a fully customizable solution so that you guys can tailor this to your needs. And it's going to be built so that you can drop this into any one of your existing iOS mobile applications. So this is a great template to have in your toolkit guys for any app you have that may need a customizable side menu. So let's go ahead and just get Xcode opened up and we are gonna get started with the build for this, guys. And we are gonna start this off by building out this navigation bar here up at the top, guys, where we have this menu button that we're gonna use to show and hide our side menu. So that's what we're gonna start this off with. And if you guys want access to the completed source code for this project, you can head over to the website and go to app templates and it will be available right here for one-time purchase for 20 bucks, or you guys could become a member here at stephancodes.com and get access to all of our app templates and pro courses for a low monthly cost, guys. So a lot of really valuable material here for a low monthly cost. Make sure you guys check that out if you really wanna level up your skills as an iOS developer. And once again, the source code is available in the app template section. The link for that is in the description, but let's go ahead and get started with this now, guys. So. Inside of our content view, the first thing we're gonna do is wrap this V stack. Let's just go embed it in something really quickly like a Z stack and we're gonna make it wrapped up inside of a navigation stack. So we're gonna build out this navigation bar. So to do that guys, I'm gonna go ahead here and say dot navigation title. We can just say home and we're gonna say navigation bar title display mode is dot inline. And then we're gonna create a toolbar item, which is gonna be this button that we see right here. And when we tap this guy, it's gonna show our side menu. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. We're just gonna create a toolbar item with placement and content, and it's gonna be top bar leading. And oops, the content is just gonna be a button with an action and a label. And the label is just gonna be image system name and it's gonna be line dot three dot horizontal, guys. And we can see that, that that looks good to go. And we are gonna create a Boolean property really fast. That's a state property that's gonna manage the presentation of our side menu. So when we hit this button, we wanna to toggle some property that's going to be in charge of presenting our side menu, right? So we're gonna go up here and say at state private var show menu equals false. And then here we are just gonna say show menu dot toggle, right? So this is going to be how we show and hide our menu, guys. So this is pretty much all we need to do for the setup of our home view. We'll come back to this in a little bit. What I want us to do now is go ahead and build the user interface for our side menu as well as the data model. So let's get started with that, guys. So we're gonna make a new file for our side menu, guys. So go up to your project navigator and let's create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view and we're gonna call it side menu view. So before we get started with the implementation of the UI, one of the first things I want us to do is create a binding property here. So we're gonna say bar binding var is showing, which is a Boolean property. So why are we making this? Well, we want to be able to dismiss the side menu when we do something like tap on an option, right? Or if I just tap on like this sort of grayed out area over here, I also wanna be able to dismiss the side menu. So we do want to be able to control the presentation of the side menu from the side menu view itself. So we are gonna bind this property to our property in the content view, which controls the presentation of our side menu. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And we need to update our preview here. So we're gonna say dot constant and we can just say false, right? It doesn't really matter. So guys, let's go ahead and get started. Oops, we need to say is showing with the implementation of our UI. Now let's get our preview up and running before we do that. And the first thing we're gonna do here is create a Z stack. So the first thing I want us to accomplish is getting that sort of grayed out background when we present the side menu. So we're gonna say if is showing then we're gonna create this rectangle with an opacity of 0 0.3 and say we're gonna ignore the safe area. And then we're gonna say dot on tap gesture is showing dot toggle. So guys, let's go ahead and see what this looks like. 
I like to wrap that up into one line to keep everything nice and clean. And you'll notice here that nothing is showing up, guys. This is because we have some conditional logic here. We only show this, this sort of grayed out view if is showing is true. So in our preview, we could modify this property to true. And we'll see that that uh, sort of grays out this view, right? And that's exactly what we want. That's how we get this sort of effect here when the side menu is showing. And if I tap that, by tapping that, it dismisses the side menu, which is the purpose of this line of code here. So that looks pretty good, guys. We're only showing that gray background if the side menu's showing, and this is linked to our binding property. Now what I want us to do is get started with this side menu header. So I really like to create like separate files for this type of stuff. So let's go ahead and make yet another file for our side menu header view. Okay, so what is this gonna be, guys? This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to have an H stack here and we are going to have an image which system name is person.circle.fill and we're gonna have a large image scale. We're gonna give it a foreground style of white. We're gonna give it a frame of a width and height of 48 by 48, a background color of dot blue, a clip shape of a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 10 pixels. And we're gonna give it some vertical padding. And next to that H stack, we're gonna have some information about like a potential user that you would show in this side menu. So this is gonna be a V stack. Our alignment is gonna be dot leading. Our spacing is gonna be six pixels. And let me change that to a colon. And we're just gonna have two text components. I'll say Stefan Dowless dot font is dot subheadline and then we'll say text test at gmail dot com dot font is dot footnote dot tint is dot gray right so that looks pretty good that's our little side menu header view and guys let's return to our side menu view and drop this in there so what I want us to do is inside of this if block make sure you guys are inside the if block because we want to make sure that we only show this stuff if this property is true, right? So we're gonna say, we're gonna create an H stack and within that we will create a V stack. Alignment is dot leading, spacing is 32 and we're gonna drop our side menu header view in there. So that looks really good. And guys, we are gonna add a spacer to this V stack so that we can get this moved up to the top. So let's go ahead and do that as well. And we are gonna give our V stack a background color of white. So this is how our side menus like slowly starting to come together, right? And the reason we wrap this up in an H stack, guys, is because we wanna get this all the way over to the left side. So to do that, we're just gonna go and find the ending bracket of our H stack and go here and add a spacer to sort of shove everything over to the left, right? And guys, our V stack is going to have a frame, or sorry, our H stack, or no, our V stack, sorry, is going to have a frame of a width of 270 pixels. So that looks really good, right? And we are going to make the alignment leading there. I think that should get it over to the left, right? Um, and then we are gonna give it some padding before that. All right, so this is really, really looking good now, right? So this is like what the current state of our side menu looks like, guys. Before we get into like all the options and stuff, I wanna see if we can actually present this from our side, uh, our content view, right? So let's go back to our content view. And the logic here, guys, is that we're gonna place all of this inside of a Z stack, right? And the side menu is sort of gonna slide over top of this existing V stack. So let's go ahead and wrap this up in a Z stack. And we can add all of this uh, navigation logic and modifiers and stuff to the Z stack now. And we can keep the padding on the V stack if we want. Right. So now anything we add after this guy right here, let's just go ahead and fold this up to keep this clear, right? We're inside of the Z stack. We actually don't need this padding. 
So this would be like the main body for your view. We're going to go ahead and create our side menu view. And we are going to pass along this is showing property. And here it's called show menu, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we get from this guys. If I hit that, it looks really janky right now, but we are showing and hiding the menu, which is absolutely incredible, right? We just need to add some code here to animate this in and out and make it a little bit smoother, right? Another thing I want to do is when we show the menu, we probably want to hide the navigation bar. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure this out. So let's go back to the side menu and configure some animation guys. So on this entire Z stack, what we're going to do is say we want this to be animated, right? And we are going to say we want it to be like a dot ease in out. And we're going to link the value of this to our is showing property. So this Z stack is going to animate according to this property changing, right? And then to get that really nice sort of slide out from the left, guys, all we need to do is add a simple line of code. And we're going to say that we want this to transition from the, we're going to say dot move and edge is dot leading, right? So let's go ahead and see what this now looks like back in our content view. It's going to be pretty cool. We can just really clean this up with two simple lines of code, right? That looks pretty good, right? We're not getting that sort of like slide out uh, functionality just yet. We're going to work on that. The next thing I want us to do is hide our navigation bar when we show this guy. So what we can do guys is on our Z stack, we can say dot toolbar is dot hidden when uh, for dot navigation bar, right? And basically we want to show and hide the navigation bar based on the value of this show menu property. So here's how we do that. Um, I think we need to say for navigation bar. So next up, we're going to say show menu. Yes. Dot hidden. No dot visible. Right? So check this out. This is super, super smooth. Now it's going to hide our navigation bar whenever we want to show the menu and I'll be able to tap there and dismiss that. And the navigation bar comes back into view. So that's super, super smooth right there, guys. Swift UI makes this stuff so easy for us to do and tie to these like state properties. So that's looking really good. What I want us to do next is go ahead and add the data model and all of the options for our side menu. So we're going to do the UI first and then we're going to add the data model for it, guys. Let's go. So this is what our menu options are going to look like, guys. We're just going to go ahead and get started with the UI for this. So it's a very simple H stack with an image and a title and then we're going to add some selection logic there as well. So to get this done, I want us to go ahead and create a new file that is going to represent our side menu row view. So let's create a Swift UI view for side menu row view. And this is going to be a really simple H stack guys. So we're going to say H stack and I can say image system name. We could do something like paper plane. And then we are going to say dot image scale is small. You guys could modify the image scale of this as you see fit. I personally kind of like the smaller images. And then we're going to add a text component. And we're just going to say like messages or whatever you want the title to be. And the font there is going to be dot sub headline. And then we're going to add a spacer to sort of shove all of that over to the left. And then what we're going to do guys is we're going to add this sort of selection logic uh, a little bit later. Um, what I want us to do before that is just say dot padding is dot leading. And we are also going to give this a frame. We're going to say we want to give it a height of 44. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it would be like to add a bunch of these row views back into our side menu. So what we're going to do is back in the side menu view, we're going to create a for each loop right under this side menu header view. So I'm going to create a separate V stack for this so we can control the spacing of the items separately here. And it doesn't have to necessarily adhere to this guy. Um, and we're just going to say for each and let's just say like zero up to like five and we'll say option in for now, because this is eventually going to be like some sort of side menu option right now. It's obviously just an index because we're just working with mock data. We're going to create our side menu row view, right? So that looks pretty good, right? It's really starting to come together here. 
So the next thing we need to do is create a data model for our menu options, guys, so that we can have a different set of options here and then we're gonna add our selection logic after that. We are gonna create another file up here for our data model to start off this section, guys. So let's go ahead and create a Swift file and we're gonna hit next. And we're gonna call this side menu option model. And we are gonna hit create. And we're gonna make this an enumeration, guys. So we're gonna call it side menu option model, and it's gonna be an integer type enum, and it's going to conform to the case iterable protocol. Sorry, man, I really cannot type. Um, so let's just go ahead and make a couple options, guys. We can say, let me just copy and paste what I have here. This is what I have in the completed app, dashboard performance, profile search, and notifications. So what we need to do is create some computed properties on this enum that are going to give us back some values in accordance to each one of our cases, guys. So here's what I mean by that. We're going to create this title property, and it's going to do a switch through the enum and give us back the title of each one of our separate cases here. And then we are also going to add an image name property. So this is essentially the data model for our enumeration, or, or sorry, our menu options, right? We need a title and an image name, and this is exactly how we accomplish that. If you guys want more on how enums work with Swift and all of the ins and outs and the intricacies of enums, make sure you go ahead and check this video out on the channel. We do a full breakdown of everything you need to know about enums with Swift guys, so that's super helpful if you don't have a solid foundation in like the higher level fundamentals with Swift. And we also have an awesome protocols video as well. And the full course for the intermediate and advanced fundamentals is available on the website at stephancodes.com. So you guys make sure you check that out as well. So we're gonna use this enum now for our data model guys. So we're gonna see just how easy it is to create a list of customizable options. And for those of you who want to customize these, you can add or remove uh, options from this enum and everything that needs to get changed will be handled in this structure. For example, if I added like a test case, you guys would notice that it's going to throw errors and everywhere I need to add data for that option. And if I were to remove an option, it would throw errors and everywhere I need to do that as well. So let's go ahead and drop this into our project now, guys. So in the side menu view, instead of looping through zero to five, we are going to say we want to loop through our side menu option model dot all cases and then we get our option right here and then we just need to inject this row view with an option so that it can display dynamic data um, oh guys we actually need to make sure that this conforms to the identifiable protocol so that we can loop through it and create views so let's go ahead and create an extension on our side menu option model conform to the identifiable protocol and we'll say var id is an integer and we're going to return the self.raw value. So that just assigns each one of our different cases an ID or a unique ID. So that way we can loop through them with Swift UI safely and not have to specify an ID property manually. You guys will notice that error will go away. So let's just get our preview up and running again to make sure that this works before we actually inject our option into our side menu row view. So Let's go ahead and do that now, guys. Side menu row view. We're going to inject this or initialize it with a side menu option model. And then we're going to replace this guy right here with option.system image name. And here, this is going to be replaced with option.title. As simple as that. And here we can add a mock option for like dot dashboard. And you guys will see what that looks like when we pass in dashboard. And we're not going to get a successful build because now we need to pass this into our side menu row view. So we're gonna go here and say option is option, just like that. And it's literally that simple, guys. You're gonna notice that all of our options are being populated beautifully there. This is coming together really nicely, guys. Next up, I want us to go over how to add selection logic and functionality to this. So ultimately, we wanna be able to select one of these options and not just like highlight it with some sort of indication that it's a, it's been selected, but also perform some sort of navigation uh, to really bring this all together. So in our side menu, guys, I want us to first start this off by adding a state property that is going to keep track of our selected option. So let's go ahead here and say selected option, which is a side menu option model, right? And basically what we wanna do 
is say whenever one of these guys is tapped, we are going to make this the selected option, right? So there's a couple things you could do. You guys could wrap this up in a button. You could say dot on tap gesture. Um, when you wrap it up in a button, you do get that nice sort of pressing animation. So let's go over how we can do that. We can make each one of these guys a button action. And the action here is going to be, guys, selected option equals option, right? And our label is just going to be the side menu row view. So you guys will notice now that this all changed to like blue colors because that's the default accent color of the application. So, but now these things are all pressable, right? And it's actually updating this selected option property. So now we have the ability to keep track of which option has been selected. So we just need to implement some additional logic on the UI to update the selected option with some, some sort of characteristics, right? We wanna give it a background and indicate to the user that it's been selected. So we're gonna to go to the side menu row view, guys. And we need to do some modification here. Uh, one, we need to know if this option is the one that has been selected, right? So what we're gonna do to figure that out is add a binding property. And we're gonna say selected, which is our side menu option model. And we could say like selected option to make that a little bit more clear. And this is gonna be optional. And then we're gonna go here and add the selected option and say dot constant is dot dashboard. Right, so now we can add some logic to figure out if the selected option is equal to the option that we have passed in. So I'm gonna make a computed property for that. I'm gonna say private var is selected, which is a bool. And we're gonna return option, or let's say selected option equals option. Okay, so now we have this parameter that's gonna help us determine whether or not the, the option that we have passed in is the selected option. So guys, in order to solve our build issue, we need to go back to our side menu view and pass in this selected option guy, just like that. So I know this might be a little confusing because it's like, yo, you're passing in an option and then you're also passing in the selected option. Well, each row view needs to be populated with an option, right? And then we're gonna pass in this, the, uh, the particular option that has been selected so that we can do some updating on the UI. And the logic is gonna be, hey, if the option that we're passing in is equal to the option that is selected, then we do some stuff, right? So let's go ahead and do that stuff. Um, let's go back to our side menu row view. And I believe this should build, right? I don't think we have any errors hanging around. Perfect. So guys, that looks really good. And we are just gonna go ahead and configure our selection logic now. So we're gonna say dot foreground style is selected, yes. And we're gonna make that dot blue, no dot primary. And primary will just give us the primary text color for the app. If we're in light mode, it is black. If we're in dark mode, it's white. And the completed version of this app has full dark mode support, guys, and additional customization features for like the theming of it and stuff. So you do get some additional stuff with the completed version of the app. And we'll go over that more at the end of the video for those of you who are interested. Um, but anyway, we're also gonna add something to the frame here, guys. We're gonna say our frame, the width is gonna be 216. And then we are going to give it a background and we're gonna say is selected yes and it's going to be dot blue dot opacity and we're going to say like 0 0.25 no dot clear oops no dot clear so this is the selected option in this case and we could lower that opacity a little bit more right so that looks pretty good um guys you know you would have noticed that if you change this to like dot profile that that's going to go away because now option is not equal to selected option so that is sort of our selection logic there, right? But if we change this back to dashboard, now the selected option is equal to the option we're passing in. This is where our selection logic comes in. And then we're just gonna add a clip shape, guys. Rounded rectangle, corner radius of 10. So now that looks nice and clean, right? So let's go back to our side menu view and see if we can select an option, right? And you guys will notice that that looks really, really good right there, right? 
I can select these options and indicate to the user that something has been selected. Okay, so next up guys, we just need to add the navigation for our application here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So let's go back to our content view guys, and we're actually gonna set up like a tab view. So just because we're saying tab view doesn't mean we actually have to have like tab bar buttons at the top, or sorry, at the bottom. What we can do here is link a menu option to a particular tab, and that's one navigation style that you can implement. Another navigation style you could implement is when you click on one of these guys, it could use a navigation stack to push a new screen. And in the completed version of this app, we have both navigation styles, guys, and there's documentation for how to implement either one, whichever one fits the needs of your application. For this one, we are just gonna be doing the tab view setup. So let's go ahead and see what I mean here. So on the Z stack, let's go ahead and delete this V stack and we're gonna create a tab view. And we are gonna say selection and content. And guys, just go ahead and delete the stuff they put in there. We are going to make a state property to keep track of our selected tab. So we're gonna say at state private var selected tab and that is gonna equal zero. And here we're gonna pass that in as our selection parameter. So this is how you keep track of which tab you are currently on. And I personally like to delete this content label, guys, so just delete that, add a closing parenthesis, and then delete that parenthesis right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste what I have in here. So we have a view for our dashboard, performance, profile, whatever, right? These are all linked to your menu options. So if we go back to our option model, dashboard, performance, profile, search, notifications, let's see, uh, we, could, we could add a search option. And this is all centered around this tag property, guys. So basically when you change the selected tab, it's gonna look at the tag that you have. So check this out. If I change this to two, you guys are gonna notice that the profile view is gonna show up on my preview because we have tagged this with two and this is how we keep track of our tab selection. So let me change this back to zero to get back to sort of our root view or our home view, right? So ba guys, basically what we wanna be able to do is show our side menu, right? And modify this selected tab property here so that our view will update accordingly and show us the correct view that is linked to that menu option, right? So what we can do is pass that along as a binding to our side menu view. And whenever we select an option, we will update that property. It will in turn update this state property and update our view. If you guys want more of an in-depth explanation on the difference between state and binding properties, we have a video for that on the channel as well. The link is in the description. So let's go back to our side menu view, guys, and we're gonna add another binding. Selected tab, which is an integer. And we're gonna fix our preview. Selected tab, dot constant, we can just say zero. And then we need to go back to our content view and pass that along. Okay, so now how do we update this property? It's pretty simple. All we gotta do is go to the side menu view and on this tap gesture, right, where we say selected option equals option, we're just gonna say selected tab equals option dot raw value, right? So, Guys, if you remember, we made this enum an integer enum type, right? Enums are value types. So each one of these guys has a corresponding raw value. Swift defaults the first one to zero, then goes one, two, three, four, right? So now when I say that I want my side menu, uh, in my side menu, when I tap on one of these options and I update the selected tab, if it's dashboard, it's gonna be zero. If it's performance, it's one, two, three, four, et cetera. Then if I go back to my content view, we have this tag system, right? That is going to render out, um, or sorry, select a view in accordance with our tag. So a better implementation of this guys would be to make sure that you are looping through um, your sort of enumeration to render these views, but we're not gonna go over how to do that. Um, Basically, let's just go ahead and see if this is working. So if I hit performance and I go back to here, we'll notice that performance is my selected view, which looks really, really good, right? 
And if I go here and I select dashboard and I go here, dashboard is my selected view. But that's not the exact functionality we want, right? We want it so that when I select one of these options, it dismisses my side menu, right? So I don't have to go here and then tap out of it, right? So let's go ahead and implement that functionality. So, and that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, let's see, when I go into my side menu view, I'm going to say is showing equals false. And something I like to do, guys, is I don't like having all of this functionality inside of the view body. So typically what you're supposed to do, this is considered best practice, is make like a helper function and say on option tapped. And we need to pass in an option, which is a side menu option model. And we are just gonna go ahead and copy and paste all of that code. And then we are gonna call that function, right? And I think we can actually delete this action parameter here and those parentheses to make that a little cleaner. And we're gonna say on option tapped and just pass in our option, right? So that should bring everything together. Let's see, it probably doesn't like that I just modified the code, so let me just back that out. Yeah, we'll keep it there. On option tapped, right? And pass in our option. Okay, so that's all good. Let's go back to our content view and see how that looks. Go here. Oh, I think the preview was a little janky for a second. Yep, that looks good. Performance, boom, boom. Notifications, dashboard. So that looks really, really good, guys. The last thing I want us to do to really wrap this up and bring it together is make sure that slide out is happening properly. And we just need to go back to our side menu view and take this transition and move it onto the H stack, guys. So go here, and now you guys will notice that if I go back to my content view, and I do that, oh, that looks absolutely beautiful, right? Go here, select performance, and then I go back to my menu, and it indicates the performance is the selected option. I click dashboard, it goes to the dashboard. I click profile, it goes to the profile. So that is looking so, so nice, guys. That is actually gonna wrap it up for this video. If you guys wanna stick around to check out what some of the additional functionality that you're gonna get included with the completed source code is, let's go ahead and check that out now. So guys, one of the first things you're gonna see is that we have the ability to create sections in our side menu in the completed version, and there's detailed documentation on the setup for this and how to modify the sections and all of that good stuff. So this gives you even more customization. As you guys can see here, we just have sort of one big list of options in the completed source code. We can divide that up into sections. The next thing you're gonna get is full dark mode support, guys. So you can read directly from the system dark mode that I just changed on the simulator and it will update the UI accordingly. So you get full dark mode support as well. Something else that's really cool is you guys will notice that we update the, the navigation title based on the option that we have selected here. Right, so if I go to performance, it looks like that. If I go to profile, it says profile. So we get different navigation title customization as well. And it's also built in a more scalable and reliable way than this setup that we have here, guys. This is a little bit error prone. We are linking these tags without really knowing anything about the enum. That is solved in the completed source code as well. So the last thing that you guys get here is the navigation style that you wanna implement. So. Here, this is still using the tab setup that we have, but we also have a different setup that where you, it uses navigation stacks to push a new screen um, from the home screen. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like as well. So guys, the navigation stack setup here is going to be like this. If I hit performance, it will navigate to a new screen instead of just updating a tab. And you guys can see here, that's indicated by the ability to go back to the home screen, right? So once again, I can go and select dashboard and this is a completely different navigation setup and you guys can choose between the two, whatever fits the needs of your application, guys. So once again, the completed source code is available on the website at stephancodes.com. It comes with the complete documentation of all of the additional features and how to set everything up and integrate this into your app, guys. And if you become a member, you can access that for free. So. Guys, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.